Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor and his friends give you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides. It's my actual job title and last name, which is part of the reason why the mathematical model that I built to predict various sports outcomes is named Sideline. And you'll hear more about that in this college basketball episode, which covers select games scheduled to be played on Thursday, December 29th, 2022. If you're here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new for some explanations, goals, full recommendations on wager scaling and community rules. As always, remember there are no locks in gambling. So what Sideline provides are loves, likes, and leans. It is A, B, and C grades. And it gets confidence level with respect to scaling wagers. It's outlined in more detail on that webpage. We got a lot of picks given out here on Patreon, on the website, in the Discord, all the A plays. There's a lot happening here. This is just a subset of those plays. Sometimes these are going to be better, sometimes these are going to be worse, but there's a lot out there. So check out all the picks. That's my recommendation. You can check out the website for more. Um, otherwise, you know, as I'm always saying, really take what you like and leave the rest. You can see the results all in that Google Sheet and see – what you like, how things have been going. Uh, so you got a lot of options to pick and choose exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but for that Google Sheet, again, that's in the show description. It's got the full set of projections for every single game. If you're looking for early access to that, to get those opening numbers and bet those missed price lines, hit up Patreon. That link is in the crawler below. It's also where you can access the Discord chat. It's the best place to get questions answered about these or other games. Lastly, please understand that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as we'd like to see, will be profitable each and every day. That is an impossible reality for any gambler. Uh, Jake, we are recording on uh, late afternoon on Wednesday. So the Wednesday games, we have zero idea how they've gone. Um, it's either gone great or terrible or mediocre. We have no idea. <laughs> we'll find out later. I think the only thing is uh, we're deep enough into the 3 o'clock Central game. I give it an under on that one, and it's looking – it's a Discord. And so it's looking yeah. like we've, we're starting off 1-0 on the day for, for the Discord picks at least. Uh, That's good. Always good to start 1-0. Yeah. It's a good start. There's like a lot of games happening, but there's even more on Thursday. There are, I believe it was 80, 80 some odd games, 34 A picks. Um, how, how did you go through all that? I feel like you turned that around in, in pretty quick time looking through all that. I gave you a lot to deal with, trying to figure out 34 play A grades, which ones we're going to talk about here. How, how did well, you even do that? Yeah, th this one helped out a lot. Like we were on the same page, like he's almost the exact mm -hmm. same page where there wasn't any that I was like kind of questioning back and forth. Most of those Apex were exactly what I was thinking were going to be the mm -hmm. Apex. So I was able to pick them out very easy, very quick. Oh, nice. And so that's what I was talking about, right? I, I kind of recommend, I, I tend to just trust the overall process of the Apex for me. A lot of times if I try to pick too many out that are, you know, oh, I'm not going to play this one or whatever, like those end up doing, you know, just fine. And so I try not to do that. I'll recommend putting a little bit out there, but you, you know, you can absolutely have your own process too and kind of see how it what you like and what you agree you know i'm not telling anyone for sure not making anyone play anything right I just, in general the a plays do well but if you could pick out which ones don't more power to you right um, if, and, if, and if you have something you like even more you know put a little bit extra that's kind of what we do with the plays of the day as well kind of try to pick, figure out which ones we like a little bit more well just a little bit more on not you know three times not four times i don't recommend that i know people do that but mathematically it's hard to justify that you know just a little bit more you know on some of those that we like uh, more but it's uh there's a lot to look through here for a thursday slate you know yeah way a lot of games i mean this is like we said started started today but i mean really getting in the conference play where uh, there's just going to be loaded games everywhere yeah it's almost like a mini saturday almost i feel like you know saturday's usually about 120 games got 80 here it's uh it, going through all of it it felt like a little bit <laughs> like a like i said a little preview of what's uh what's to come but before we get to today's games some reminders please hit that like button if you're on youtube also if you aren't yet please consider subscribing or following it's free and if you turn on notifications you'll miss any of the college basketball and will be our college football content that this channel provides Already mentioned the page, but check it out if you haven't yet. Lots of great benefits to be found over there. Above and beyond what we do here, plays of the day, Discord access, lots of good chat, lots of good picks over there, insights over there as well. Access to ad-free shows, early access to the shows, early access to projections, all sorts of goodies you might be interested in. www.patreon.com slash picks with the professors, how you get there. But even if you're not there, we're still thrilled to have you here. Let's get to it. All lines courtesy of Bet Online. Sign up link in the show description. Current as the time of this recording. Again, it is late afternoon on Wednesday. We're talking Thursday games here, wrapping up December. Again, I mentioned it 34 A grade plays as of right now. I might have a few more in the morning based off some number movement. Um, of all of them, I, one of the two biggest edges on the board, I believe it's the second biggest edge on the board. We both love this one right here. Chattanooga got minus six at the Citadel. From a mathematical standpoint, y'all heard me say it a lot. I don't want to seem like a broken record. Uh, but, I mean, when you lay a number with the favorite, 
playing seven or less is always a little bit better because you got a better chance of getting over that number with fouls. So laying six is a great spot here for Chattanooga. They're a pretty solid team, a little above average. The Citadel is just not very good. And so laying six makes a lot of sense. The model says it should be nine. Um, we've been pretty spot on both these teams all season. We've been uh, a little bit more heavily backing Chattanooga a little bit more fading the Citadel, but overall the projection system has been pretty close to the results for both these teams, so I trust my number at nine. I think nine's a closer number than six. I expect this to move out and get out towards a seven and eight number by the time you get to tip. Don't know if it's going to matter. They might win by 10, and it doesn't really matter you know, what you lay, but they could easily win by seven or eight, so getting a great number like six is something to me you can't pass up on. It's again our A-plus play of the day here. It'll account for both of our records. Jake, why are you comfortable backing Chattanooga minus six? Look, I know Chattanooga doesn't have much of a defense. It can be a little sloppy with the ball. Um, they've, but they've given their last two games away against two pretty good teams. They've had leads in both and just kind of let them go. Uh, I don't think Citadel is a team that's going to happen against. Uh, they've got no offense or defense. They've lost four straight. Um, they, they can't seem to stay in the game to save their lives. Uh, this is another one we just shouldn't overthink. Like you said, Chattanooga minus six. This is the way to go. Citadel's bad. And – like you said, if I think this one ends up closer to ten, but if you wait and get and it gets out to nine and you gra- and you grab nine, where, like where our sideline puts it, I mean you're sweating it the whole time. Where the people who grab it early are feeling pretty good. Yeah, and I, I mentioned this yesterday, but it's that same concept of you know when you're thinking about every hundred games that you bet, the difference between you know two or three can mean a big difference, and that's kind of what we're talking about here. That uh, it, it may not matter when you think about if they were to play this game a hundred times, how many of those times does it land six, seven, eight, something like that? Enough that again, I think it's worth it to go ahead and grab the six, and that's valuable. I'd still, I'm like you, I still play it at seven, eight. I just maybe a little bit less, just because again, you might be sweating out a little bit longer. It may not matter. Chattanooga may only win by three, right? There's no locks of gambling. They may win by thirteen, so it may not matter either way. But there's a chance that it is in that six to ten range and if you're at six you're feeling a whole lot better so a great number to lock in there that's our a plus play of the day 33 other a plays to talk about we're not gonna talk about them all here right so again there's lots of ways that we're giving those out via the play of the day the discord early access to those picks via patreon so you get a lot of great plays and a lot of things where you can kind of just put a little bit on all of them pick out your favorites but of those 33 the best of the rest we're gonna highlight three of them right here First one, 5 p.m. Central, Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State at Charlotte. Jake, you're going to lay the two and a half with Charlotte. The model's locked this in as an A grade, saying that it should be Charlotte minus four. The model is seven and two backing Charlotte. It's underestimated just how good Middle Tennessee State has been, but it's also underestimated Charlotte. So I don't really think there's a bias towards or against either team here. Charlotte's been a great team to back. Middle Tennessee Middle Tennessee State's been more 50-50 with regards to the spread. Charlotte at home laying a short number. I'd love it if a little bit more if it was two. We talked about laying two is a lot better than two and a half. So shop around. Maybe you can find a two. But even two and a half or three probably seems like a safe bet here with the better team at home. Jake, tell us more. Look, this is the slowest team in all sports. I'm, I'm sure of it. They're just ultra efficient. I mean, they make almost everything they throw up because they're just not shooting a lot and they're still score. Uh, they work. They make you work your tail off on the defensive or on the offensive end to find a shot, and then you end up taking a shot you don't really like anyway. Uh, I mean, their only real blemish is they don't guard the three point arc that well, but it's, it doesn't it isn't a big deal because most of the time they're chasing you off that. There's just not a lot of threes being shot. Um, Middle Tennessee is a good team, but and this should be a heck of a game, but they just don't have the offense to solve this defense. They don't shoot the ball well at all from three free throw line inside the arc. They're just, they're not a very good jump shooting team. Um, they depend on layups and stuff. And that plays right in the hand of Charlotte, uh, Charlotte here. Uh, they also, they give up easy shots to, too often. Like efficient offenses can really uh, make them pay. I mean, just see where Chattanooga who has a much, much, much worse defense than Charlotte. Uh, I took care of them at, and on the road too. So I, was, I think Charlotte's been a little bit underrated here, especially at home. And I think Charlotte can really take advantage of this. Yeah. And you talk about the pace of Charlotte being so incredibly slow. When you have two teams that are relatively similar, um, doing something different, having something that you excel at, which in this case, like you said, is making the other team just really fall asleep on the defensive end for how much time you're taking and how hard you're working on the defensive end to make them take a long time as well. That like right there could be the difference in getting them over the hump and get at home. Laying a short number makes a lot of sense. Jake, you're liking that Charlotte minus two and a half pick there, which takes us to the 8 p.m. game out in Cincinnati to lane 
is traveling there. Cincinnati's a four and a half point favorite. The model says this should be six and a half. So you got a couple of good points of value here. Of note, we're three and one backing Cincinnati, eight and two fading Tulane. We faded Tulane a lot this season, and it's mostly been pretty profitable to us. And Jake, you're going to fade them again here. Tell us why. Look, Cincinnati's flying a little under the radar. I mean, besides a head scratching loss to Northern Kentucky, um, that was on the road. Not exactly sure why they were on the road. And a drumming by Ohio State. They've been a really, really good this year. I mean, they had an eight point loss to Arizona, and we know how good Arizona is. A three point loss to Xavier and a heated crosstown rivalry. That's, uh, I mean, those are two really good teams that they're hanging they, right there with. They battled back against Xavier, if I recall, yeah. really well. Uh, yeah. a, a game that they were, they fell behind early, but again, played really well to stay in that game in a game that they could have just folded like a tent and didn't, and, and kudos to them for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was very impressive. I mean, they're a fast-paced team who take care of the ball. Um, they're very smart with it. They have got a really good assist to field goal made ratio to very high effective field goal percentage. They need to work on the free throw line, and they foul a little too much on the defensive end. But other than that, they're just a very, very solid team. Uh, Tulane is a carbon copy of them. They try to do everything they do, but just not as well. Just not I as mean, good, shoot, yeah. Yeah, they shoot the free throw ball a lot better, but other than that, they're just not not as good as the Cincinnati team, especially rebounding ball. Um, they struggle from three, and they get their shot blocked too much, and they're not picking up any extra chances. So, And they also give up a lot of threes and allow way too many assists against a really good team like Cincinnati, who's going to be able to work the ball around. Uh, Cincinnati will really take advantage of the weak spots in their defense and should be able to win this game much closer to 10 than 4. Or 4 now. Yeah, I... Yeah, and this is you talk about Cincinnati not shooting the free throw great. Well, let's talk about the number. You know, if you can lay four model locked in four a little bit earlier, so hopefully you get you can get a four still, a four and a half. You know, once you get up, if you're laying again, the model says six and a half, but if you're laying six, it's a little bit more of a sweat with a bad free throw shooting team like Cincinnati than it is with a lower number. At least when we're laying a number, a lower number with fouls late, we got a little bit of wiggle room, right? They don't have to make. I feel like when you're laying seven, you have to have a team that's going to make like all those free throws at the end to get you to seven. But at least here, it's like we got they can miss like one one extra free throw two extra free throws and, and we could still maybe get outside of it in that situation obviously we hope that Cincinnati's up 10 you know with five minutes to go and it's just a nice easy cruise to victory yeah. but you know you never really know how the game's going to play out ahead of time and so in that situation where it's with fouls at least laying you know four four and a half five is a little bit better than up to six or seven with a team that might struggle with shooting the free throw yeah yeah I mean that's very true also at 8 p.m. Central Eastern, Washington is getting five and a half at Montana. Jake, we got an A play here in Eastern Washington. You're going to grab the points with them. Models really underestimated both these teams to about a similar degree, but we're six and two backing Eastern Washington and three and one fading them. Had a pretty good hand on them all season. Montana's been a pretty 50 50 team all year long. With models says Montana should be a four point favorite. These two teams are pretty similar. So why Montana's quite this large of a favorite, it's a little bit of a surprise. Jake, I'm assuming that's why you're taking the five and a half points with Eastern Washington. Yeah, uh, Montana plays at a slow pace and has a god-awful defense, and that combination is just not good for covering, uh, especially in tight games with relatively similar talented teams. Uh, they also don't get a, very many extra chances with how they hit the offensive glass and don't force turnovers. Um, Eastern Washington is probably the more talented team. Uh, I think they are, but they turn the ball over too much to be the better team. They play at a faster pace, so there's – a little bit of that it falls into the turnovers. But, I mean, this won't be a very attractive game because neither of these teams are very good. But it'll be close and very tight, and that's why we're going to take the points because I think this will be a two- to three-point game the whole time. I feel like some of my play of the day write-ups are kind of that simple and straightforward. It's like, oh, these two teams are pretty similar. Like, why am I getting this many points? Like, it's it's not – like, we don't have to overthink it, right? Like, depending on kind of which way you look at it, like, you, there's a real case that these two teams are dead even. And obviously, Montana should be favored, being that they're home, but that would be by – two and a half probably uh again model even says four which again like i said depending on how you look at it i feel like two and a half to four is probably about what you'd say getting five and a half is just like i'm getting free points just take the free points because i don't it, it's not any more complicated than that it's real, okay. short and simple right to the point right yeah exactly i mean i i don't really i'm very confused by this line to be honest i thought this would be closer to two yeah, absolutely. And that takes us to the Jake and Alim segment, a game that I kind of pushed for in the musty TV slot, just because I want to give some love to our West Coast people, our Pac-12 
Pac-12 friends, our night owls, uh, 10 p.m. Central, Colorado Stanford, it won't be the greatest of basketball games. Um, the quality, we got the depth of games on Thursday, maybe not the quality, right? The quality really is on Wednesday. We got all the depth games on Thursday, but this is still one of the better games, and it is on ESPNU, so uh, uh, easier to watch than some of the games in the Pac-12 network, of course. Stanford yeah. is a two-and-a-half point favorite. Jake, you're going to grab those. You're going to lay the two-and-a-half points. Model says it should be about one, so not an A-grade play on either side. Um, these two teams, I feel like if things go well, either one of these teams could end up being an at-large team in the tournament. Yeah. If things go south, they might miss the NIT. They're kind of a lot of outcomes uh, for the middle – middle class here of the Pac-12. Uh, Jake, you're going to lay the two and a half of Stanford. Tell us why. Yeah. I made a mistake. I think I told you wrong. That's on me. Oh. I'm taking Colorado. I'm taking the points. You're taking Colorado. Okay. Taking the two yeah. and a half of Colorado. All right. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I'm really not sure where this love for Stanford's coming from. They've got a good mm. defense, but they've not beat a single good team on the year. Um, their wins include Pacific, Cal Poly, Florida State, Green Bay, and Loyola, Chicago. No, no, nothing there that's going to impress you that much. They play slow, and they can be real sloppy. They don't shoot the ball very well, and they take way too many threes. Colorado should be able to force them into a faster game, keep the ball, uh, keep them behind the arc. They won't give them hardly any second chances with the way they rebound. Colorado, like this, I don't want to play it too much higher than uh, – or too much lower than this two and a half because Colorado doesn't shoot the ball very well either. Uh and they don't shoot that many threes, and that's the main difference between this team is one team realized they're not a great shooting team and the other team hasn't yet. Uh, but this this should be a start of a 2-0 road trip for Colorado, in my opinion, getting back to 500 or back 12 play. play. Yeah, uh, I fixed it in real time here. Got the banner fixed. Colorado plus 2 and a half. Yeah, um, you know, it's solving problems left and right. Uh, Model wants 3 for an A grade on Colorado. It locked in Colorado plus 2 as a B grade. So uh, kind of like you were saying, right, you don't really want to go any less than less than that 2. Uh, you got to at least get that. Maybe, the, maybe a corresponding money line play makes a lot of sense as well um, in that, you know, coin toss type game take the plus odds uh but this is one that you know by the time people are watching this if it does get out to three you may even see in the sheet that it's locked in as an agri because if it does get to three the model likes it there so you're just a little bit your, your threshold's a little bit lower than the models which is totally <laughs> understandable right you know we always have to add that human element to it uh model has gone seven and four fading colorado only backed them twice one of the few times that it's backing uh colorado here uh, thinks are the better team, but again, uh, on the road, like I said, it should be an interesting close game. Getting a couple points, getting plus odds can make some sense there and some late night action, which will take us to the daily double double. We've actually got two double doubles for you again. So we've got a double double double. Yeah. <laughs> Seven, and both the games at the same time, too. 7 p.m. Central, St. Thomas. At South Dakota, we are going to grab St. Thomas as a pick em on the road. That's an A-grade play, according to the model, and go over 142. Jake, you've got the side. That is your pick. Tell us more about why you're on St. Thomas. Look, I'm not sure which team, if any, will figure out that there's a defensive side of the ball. But until they do, I'm going to ride with the team with the better offense in this game every time that St. Thomas. There's We've talked about them several times on here before because mm -hmm. both just can't seem to get this right that they've got a very, very, very good offense and a just absolute garbage defense because they just don't try on that end, I guess. Like, I don't know, maybe they're saving all their legs and energy for the offensive end. Uh, but in a pick them, this is kind of ridiculous, you would think, to have it. With two teams, they've got almost the exact same defense and the offensive gap being that big, home court's not that big of a difference. St. Thomas all the way here. Yeah, absolutely. This is the other massively large edge, according to the model. So I think it should be three and a half. St. Thomas has been really good to us mm -hmm. this year, eight and three backing them. And then the two times that we didn't back them, they covered them as well. So St. Thomas, 10 and three against the spread this year. South Dakota, we've backed them once and they won. We faded them 10 times. We've got nine and one fading them. I, the number just hasn't caught up to these two teams. One of these teams one of these teams has a good enough offense to negate the fact that their defense is terrible. The other one doesn't. I mean, it's that simple. And like you said, home court matters, but it doesn't matter this much. St. Thomas should be able to get the win. You're on St. Thomas there officially. I'm going to give you the over 142 and a half. The model says it should be 150. And I feel like we kind of just laid it out. Both these teams are terrible on the defensive end. Neither one of them plays at a lightning speed. They don't really play slow necessarily, but they're not fast by any stretch of the imagination. 
It's just that you're going to have such a high quality of possession here because of how bad the defenses are. Again, St. Thomas scores a lot of points. South Dakota will score because St. Thomas will allow points, but uh, St. Thomas should be able to name their score. The model predicts a final score of about 77 to 73. uh, Should get us closer to 150 to 142 and a half. So we're going to go St. Thomas and over 142 and a half. You can parlay them, take one, take the other, take neither of them, whatever you want. We got two picks that we absolutely love on that one. And for the second part, of your daily double double. I'm going to give you both of these 7 p.m. Central South Florida plus 16 and under 142. We're going to grab all those points with South South Florida model says this should be 14 gives it an A grade. There's not a ton to say here other than the fact that South Florida eight and five against the numbers. They've been pretty good. Uh, if you've been backing them this season, Memphis has been pretty 500 against the spread. Uh, and the model has been spot on estimating memphis but has underestimated just how good south florida is they're decent enough to hang around this game and not get blown out uh given that they um you know get to slow the game down enough to prevent memphis from having too many possessions to run away with this one and i love this under 142 the model says it should be 136 one of the biggest total edges of the day with six point differential there it's just a lot. Uh, I think the model might be underestimating both teams a little bit. I think that maybe 136, the model says, maybe that's a little bit too low. Maybe it should be more like 138. But I think we're going to be more at 140 or less than getting up to 142. So like the under 142, as well as South Florida plus 16. A little bit of correlation there. So maybe put a small bet on that parlay because if one wins, the other one's more likely to win uh, or take them separately. That's how we're going to do for the official grading purposes. Jake, you have any feedback for me on the South Florida Memphis game? Look, I've got, I've got nothing to add. You nailed all the points I would have said here. I just, I don't think Memphis is good as good as they need to be to win this by 18, 20 points or whatever. Cause South Florida is a little bit better than most people are seeing. And I think the game gets slowed down enough to keep this under 140. Yeah, it feels like one of those games that even if Memphis is out 17, like one of those where the back door is just wide open because at that point they really don't care if they win by 17 or 15. And South Florida still got their starters out there, you know, trying to score at the end of the game or something. One of those where you just hate to lay a big number like this because if you're laying it with Memphis, you really need them to be out about 25 late in the game. And then at that point you can coast. And yeah. South Florida probably going to slow it down to make that difficult. And, and you never know if Memphis gets hot and hits all their threes, South Florida can't hit a bucket. Obviously, that sort of thing. But on average, they should slow it down enough to keep it closer than that, which gives us a great chance to cover. Which takes us to the total of the day. Uh, Back to our friends over in the summit, Western Illinois and South Dakota State. Total on this one's 144. We're going to go over that. Uh, Model says it should be 151 and a half. You've got two teams that play relatively fast and don't play defense. You see a lot of that in the summit. These totals just all need to be about three or four points higher it seems like for the summit because there's just not a lot of defense and a lot of scoring happening. So we're going to go over on that one as your total of the day. Yeah. The summit might as well be zero defense league. Hey, I mean, that makes it, that makes it fun, right? (laughs) More entertaining to watch than certain other conferences, right? Agreed. It is much more entertaining than a slow, (laughs) low scoring game. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Which will bring us to the must see TV games of the day. Again, not all as much quality here on Thursday as Friday, but we got two games to highlight that should find your television. One of them you're probably aware of. The other one might fly a little bit under your radar, but is definitely worth keeping an eye on the first one. 5.30 5.30 p.m. at Central, Providence at Butler. Jake, you're going to grab two points with Providence in a game that the model says Butler should be favored by two and a half, so it's pretty spot on here. We could This would be kind of the Jake on a limb segment as well. You know, The model's just saying, I'm out, I don't really know, but Jake, you like Providence here to get the job done on the road. I've liked Butler. They've been, they've been kind of doing well for us early on in the season, but they've really struggled uh, as of late uh, the model's underestimated just how good Providence has been, and so that's the side you're going to take. You're going to grab those two points. Tell us more. Yeah, like these are two teams I think are heading in opposite directions. Like Providence is playing very well right now, winning five in a row, including wins at Seton Hall. They got Marquette and ho- at home in overtime, and they just they really got a top uh, top tier ish, maybe right next to the top tier uh, offense, and they rank fourth in offensive rebounding percent per, uh, percentage. They hit their free throws. They do. Decent enough at holding on to the ball. They don't shoot a lot of threes, and I think that helps them here. Uh, their defense rebounds very, very well. Um, they don't foul too much. They do a good job of stealing the ball, so live ball turnovers end up to easy buckets. They do a very good job of that. Uh, Butler has lost both conference games by 20. They struggle to rebound the ball. They're very, very thin. Uh, 
and they get very jump shot dependent. They kind of fall back into that when when the game gets starts getting away from them. They start shooting a little more jump shots instead of working and getting an easy bucket. Uh, it's just not. I don't think it's going quite well for them yet. And then with Ali Ali has not been the shooter that thought he was. Part of that's probably the injury. Um, and he just might be just having an off year. Uh, and their lack of aggressiveness with the jump shots keeps them from the free throw line, a place where they really excel. So I just I don't think. They're going to be able to do it. I mean, they've got one big guy, Manny Bates. A lot of fun to watch. Very good player. Uh, it's just he's not enough to be in the paint. Providence, uh, it's got they're they kind of play a really small ball kind of feel to them here. They're kind of shorter on the team, but Bryce Hopkins is just a very very good player that Kentucky really misses on having him not there because he's just been a really good this year. Uh, I think this should be a very super tight an intense game, but I'm going to take the points here because I think Providence pulls it out in the end because I just don't think Butler has it, but Butler being at home makes me a little nervous. So I want, I just want the plus two here. Do you know if Manny Bates is related to Amani Bates? Are, are they related at all? Do we know? I don't know. This guy played at NC State before coming to Butler. Yeah, okay. so I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I just, I just heard that. I was, I was just thinking about the, my brain went right to the other one, especially with their names being similar. I don't I have no idea if there's any relation there. Um, we, we keep bringing up the Butler UConn game. So if you're a Butler fan, I'm sorry uh, to keep bringing it up. But uh, kind of what you said there, I think might be why we kind of said that we never really felt like Butler had a chance because they were just so jump shot heavy. It never really felt like Butler could generate any offense against a good defense like that. And obviously, Providence defense is nowhere near as good as UConn's. But those types of things can haunt you in any basketball game if you're playing a reasonably good team because you know Butler just not able to like you say get to the line get to the hole get easy looks and that's what it felt like watching that Butler game uh when they played UConn was just every look was just tough and again part of that was UConn but part of that's Butler's doing and that might be why they've struggled as of late even when they've won a couple games before that they weren't winning it by as big as we thought they would they were a great team to back early on in the season but I think you said it really well Two teams just kind of go in the opposite direction. And what should be an interesting game for sure is you're going to grab the two with Providence. And the other one that might surprise you but should be on your television set, 7 p.m. Central Florida Atlantic at North Texas. Jake, you're going to grab the point and a half of Florida Atlantic. Sidelines, this should be North Texas minus 1.3. So another game that the model is just kind of saying, I want to pass on. But Florida Atlantic, 11-1, UNT 10-2. Both of these teams eyeing, you know, you know, a good seed if they can win their conference. And if they if they play well enough from here, you know, maybe even an at-large bid, with, you know, not completely off the table. Um, you know, they, they obviously need to do really well in conference because they've kind of lost a lot of their chance now. They, they, they only have so many more chances to look good now, right? But you know, one of those things where both these teams are are, are kind of in that bubble-ish range, you know, or, or, or in my opinion, similar quality to a lot of the bubble teams. Um should be a good contest here. Uh, Florida Atlantic, probably the slightly better team, but on the road. Again, while we've kind of got this spread about where it is, uh, Jake, why are you grabbing the one and a half with Florida Atlantic? Look, you know, but I think everyone needs to start paying attention to this Florida Atlantic team because they could sneak in on the bubble. They're probably going to win the conference, but they, they're they a very good team. I mean, they dropped one on the road to Ole Miss, but that was the second game of the year. But ever since then, they've been on a hot streak. They've got the 38th-ranked offense and efficiency and 53rd defense. They rank ninth in effective field goal percentage, 11th in three-point percentage. They don't turn the ball over. I mean, they're not perfect. I'm not trying to say this is the perfect team because they don't force a ton of turnovers and they struggle from the free throw line and don't do a great job defending at the rim. But they are very good. Their defense forces a lot of jump shots and ones you'd rather not take. North Texas defense is not that much better. I mean, they've got the better defense, but it's not by enough to make it where you want to start leaning that way because their offense is way behind Florida Atlantic's offense. They struggle to find good shots. They don't. But but they do hit the glass hard, but I don't think that's going to be enough. They're not going to get enough extra chances here because they're well below average in three-point and two-point percentage. Their pace makes it really hard for teams to, like, for them to pull away and keeps other teams in it when it's a close game because they're just not pushing enough, pushing enough, getting enough possessions, things like that. Um, and they're very stubborn about it. They really don't want to get off that pace. Uh, I don't – like, Florida Atlantic doesn't really need to do – anything like to push the pace on them because they play at a slowish pace. So they're going to be a little more comfortable there too. Uh, they've got three games. Uh, North Texas has got three games against what Ken Palm has at like 115 or lower. Um, and they've lost two of the three. Uh, 
the one win was Grand Canyon, and that was the 115 team. But the other two were well better, much better than Florida Atlantic. I think this one are, is much closer to the St. Mary's game of those, where North Texas only scored 33 points. I think Florida mm. Atlantic wins this game. How? How is it even possible? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, less than a point a minute is wild. Man. I think. I think Florida Atlantic plays a little faster than St. Mary's, so that should help them score more than 33, but probably not going to get to 60, right? I mean, there's a, there's a reason the total in this game is 127 and a half, is that we think it's this seems like a first to 60 type game uh, here for, for these two teams. Uh, but yeah, I, I just love that we talked about North Texas and um, Charlotte in the same show. We've got the two <laughs> slowest, te- those two, and kind of a good gap between them and Virginia, right? Those two yeah. teams just love to slow it down. And like you said, it creates, this, it, it's the same benefit and flaw that we always talked about for years with Virginia when they were so good was when you play fewer possessions, it helps you with upsets because it means other teams are gonna have a really hard time pulling away from you, but it hurts you when you're the better team. Um, This probably helps North Texas here because Florida Atlantic's a little bit better hang in the game, but at some point you got to score. And if they can't score, it's hard to beat good basketball teams. Um, You mentioned them with the conference. Of course, I think Florida Atlantic and uh, UAB should be a fantastic uh, yes. battle for who wins this conference. And like I said, I'd argue that both of them should make it, but yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. If it, a lot will depend on who gets the quality wins, and I don't know if they do any of the bracket buster games and how all that stuff will play out, but um, I'd love to see both those teams in the dance. Just give them a chance um, against some of the big boys, but if they both are going to make it and you're going to get two teams out of this conference, they're going to need to two teams kind of beat everybody else up. And North Texas being at 13, this is a great quality win yep. that Florida Atlantic could put on their resume and give themselves a chance to be an at-large team. Or the same for North Texas, right? They could jump up. This would be a great quality win. Yeah. Uh, these two teams play here in Denton um, now, and I think in uh, a couple of weeks they actually have the return game back uh, at Florida Atlantic, so they'll mm-hmm. they'll see each other again shortly. So two of the top three teams here, really, in Conference USA, should make for some good basketball. Mm-hmm. Jake, you're going to grab the one and a half with Florida Atlantic, kind of similar to that Providence situation where maybe put a point or two in your back pocket. Take plus odds if if that's the sort of thing you like, but should be good games going with the road team in both. And that's the nine games we're covering today. Uh, Jake, any uh, – or ten games. I don't even know how many we covered. Whatever, nine or ten. We covered a bunch of games. You got a bunch of picks. Uh, Jake, any parting words for people's Thursday college basketball betting? Yeah, now it's time to be in Discord and uh, the Patreon because I'm about to take off to Ireland for a week. I'll be off for a week. I'll still be active there. I just won't be on the show. So if you want my opinion on anything, those are two places to find it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we've uh, we've a lot of us have traveled and we do shows from location, you know, whether it's I've been in Mexico last year. We did that. Right. And uh, we've been I was out in Georgia, once, Florida. You've been traveling around these holiday seasons. And uh, this is the first time that someone's traveling and it's like, no, nah, you're like, you're gone. Like the timing yeah. is just going to be impossible to make this work. So, yeah, Jake will be off all. <laughs> yeah, just really throws everything off. Jake will be off the entire uh, next week. Cousin Jared will be on tomorrow and he'll hop in for a couple of the shows next week. I'll do a bunch of show, solo shows. So, uh, But Jake will be active on the Discord. So uh, yeah. sign up and hop over there and get his thoughts on some of the games. And then we'll welcome him back once he gets back from Ireland. Uh, uh, ho- hopefully he doesn't need a vacation from his vacation. Right? Hopefully he comes yeah. back rested and, uh, and, and ready to talk some more college basketball. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can only hope. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning into this episode of Fix with the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can enjoy all the sports betting content we've on this channel. It's dropped right into your feed. Back again tomorrow again with Cousin Jared for college basketball betting content. Again, check out the College Football Bowl shows if you haven't yet. Until we see you again, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.